How's it going, everybody? We're Atreyu, and you're watching Loudwire. Hey everyone, Gromit here with the entirety of Atreyu to play some Wikipedia fact or fiction. These guys are going to prove and disprove what's on their various Wikipedia pages mm -hmm. oh. uh, because I believe they are a credible source about themselves. It says in the very beginning, uh, you guys were originally named Retribution, and you were more of a street punk band. True. Yeah. Yeah. But not all of us. It was, that was just me, Dan, and, and right. Alex. Yeah, the original uh, yeah. band that we were in when we were like 14, 12 or 13 15, was, yeah. Yeah. was definitely punk it's rock. It's a great name, by the way. Retribution yeah. is a great name. Yeah. Sick. We, oh. did, we did like, we had awesome time too. We played like really awesome. Yeah, a lot yeah, of punk. We played, we played, like, we played like Fear, oh, Casualties, nice. Anti-Flag. We played with a lot of punk bands back in the day, and started getting a little bit of a following too. It was like, kind of like that's how Trey you kind of became what it was because we were doing that, and we started naturally getting more aggressive and kind of getting really attracted to the hardcore scene. So Puberty hit. We changed more. our name. Yeah. Our voices dropped. So did our genitalia. And mm -hmm. next thing you know, boom, we're fucking. I heard hate breed. Next like, thing you know, New York interview. Here today. we are. Oh yeah, you just like you that. made it. <laughs> was, was there like oh, yeah. Yeah. dripping in your <laughs> Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Were there any? Was there anyone like from the like original punk scene who kind of saw where you guys went and were just like, oh, god, those guys used to be so great and now they're. The, the no, I feel like I feel like we. Like, I feel like a big part of the thing when we were young and in a, a punk band was that we didn't come from a a poor neighborhood. Okay. None of us were. Yeah. None of our families yeah. were rich, but <laughs> like we didn't come from like a troubled neighborhood. Okay. So like we were we were like five rich kids playing punk music. So like a lot of the, lo I would say like some local bands kind of looked at that as not very punk. Yeah, you guys so, have more than ten dollars in your bank account. But yeah, then, you, yeah. it'd be fair, like I mean, I worked at like the punk yeah, record we store. We had like yeah. we're friends with all the, the real dudes. I think like posers who lived in Long Beach and like were worried about their spiky hair, like didn't like us. Yeah, and I'm thinking of a particular band in particular, but <laughs> punk, <laughs> punk isn't a bank account necessarily. Yeah, you punk. Know? Yeah. It's, 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 it's a field. It's a way of life, bro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's true. Uh, it said that you changed the name to Atreyu oh, after another band from California had already not you had the name Retribution. Not true. true. No, it's not true. Okay. False. Lineup changes, puberty, high school. Can we live update this Wikipedia? Right Although, now? Should. Yeah. you do it, people. <laughs> <laughs> Although, Atreyu, the name Atreyu at the time when we picked the name, there was internationally several bands called Atreyu. One in particular from Australia that was like a Mostly girl band later, okay. but uh, all of those got steamrolled over by us <laughs> existing. So I love a where are they? Bye. Now? Yeah, where, where are, are they now? now? Where are they now? Nowhere. Bye. I don't know. <laughs> what if the Lord? There's a really big Atreyu in like Australia. We just don't know about. They're Atreya. just killing Atreya. Atre yeah, Atreyas. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm -mm. Uh Dan. It says, uh, for Atreyu's music, you're heavily influenced by 80s rock, Gothenburg metal, and Johnny Cash. Uh, I don't know about the Johnny Cash part. No? Or okay. even really the Gothenburg part. What's wrong with part. Johnny Cash? Mother? I mean, yeah, he's just not influential for me. He's, he's all right. Um, <laughs> okay. I was, I mean, Gothenburg. No. I mean, like, I'm more so influenced <laughs> by, like, specific. 80s stuff. I guess Gothenburg. It's like, <laughs> it's it's like the I mean, yeah, yeah. He's referencing yeah. the Swedish sound. Yeah. 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 yeah, I'm a little influenced by the Swedish stuff. Dan likes to act like he's I'm not. More of like an all, it's all 80s butt rock. I'm more of like an Uppsala, like North Sweden. <laughs> no, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's the real cold cities. stuff there. Yeah, yeah more of a cold. A little more thing, east so. of Gothenburg. That's where it's true. Yeah. Yeah, the Johnny Cash, I don't know what that is. That's he's also true. Take that the fuck out of there. I love Johnny Cash, but they're not Dan. So they're not talking about guitar players. Oh, no. I feel you can clearly hear it in all the acoustic stuff we do. Yeah. yeah. And the kind of like twangy guitar stuff we do. Yeah. The Johnny sure. Cash influence. <laughs> uh, Brandon, it says, uh, between the Visions and Fractures records, uh, that's when you learned to sing while playing drums and became the band's clean vocalist. Kind of. That was kind okay. of like, a, we kind of stumbled upon that by accident. Uh, so it's somewhat true. Uh, we did Visions, and I sing like maybe three lines on Visions. Okay. Uh, and then we were in like a pop punk band, and, oh, okay. and our singer wasn't working, and I wrote a song, and I did the de a demo for the song, and I sang on it, and it was like, oh, like, you can actually sing. So I started singing for that band, and then we started singing more in this band, and it was all kind of just stumbled into each other by accident. Okay. Um, I actually remember the day we were re recording um, at my house, like a raw demo, just trying to put something together. And we were trying to play this song we have called Tulips Are Better. And at the time, it was like 
something where you know where Brandon was gonna you know, needed to sing or like uh, it has this like crazy double bass part and you need to like sing over that like, can you sing over that and play that at the same time and he was like I don't know let me sing and he just went into it nailed it first time we're like Jeez. oh guess you can do that then all right work. so that's uh, you're gonna be the singer guy now Alex is gonna scream we're just gonna do that from now on Boom. yeah God. Boom. so it wasn't even that rough learning the mechanics of you know. no I've to this day just keep the thought out of my head and that's when I usually do best uh, yeah I just don't overthink it cool. Yeah. Uh, it said that The Curse has gone on to sell more than uh, 450,000 copies. I wanted to know if that was true or if it actually has gone gold. It's this close. I, it's I was thinking it, was, it must be in so the United close States. Right now. In the United Scan States, it's yeah, around it's, probably 450, 460 now, yeah. somewhere around like that. But it's okay. pretty damn close. All right. So everyone go out there and get The Curse so that we can yeah. get that plaque. Buy that shit again, please. Yeah, <laughs> yeah very close, which All is right. awesome. All right, that's true then. Uh, Mark, uh, on the curse, uh, it says you're listed as a member of the band, but it is unclear as to whether you played bass on the recording, uh, because the band gives thanks to Tom McDonald from Headley for lending his bass skills to the recording, and it is not known uh, whether he played bass on every song <laughs> or only a song. I realized it was like a mystery surrounding yeah, it. was pretty clear. <laughs> no, I was not on that record. Yeah. Not on the curse. No, I, I, when they were recording it, they sent me the bass that that guy did and drum tracks, and I learned it, and I toured that whole cycle. Mm -hmm. Okay. But they, the... Kind of, sh that guy the, played bass, and yeah. then we shared the rest of the bass duties, kind of. Yeah. And oh, so, okay. like, gotcha. when the previous bassists that went down, it was like they were already in Canada recording, so there's yeah. no way I could, like, learn the entire record, fly to Canada, and record that day. Yeah. It was, like, a quick thing, so I just... It was literally the bass day. Literally, it was bass day, and things fell apart with his situation yeah. and it was like man we got to have someone to play bass by tomorrow and this dude so came so, in and started learning learning the songs and just went through they just sat down and did it kind yeah. of yeah yeah now he's in like some multi-platinum canadian rock band yeah he's a yeah cool was it it's headley i think that was his old day his old one he's, he's in, in another one, one. I think like that huge yeah Canada, or they went on random. to be huge at one point nickel can we play on your yeah. record <laughs> yeah <laughs> do you need a guest guitar player maybe yeah. oh thanks yeah. Cool. All right. Well, the mystery is solved. Yeah. Really. Updated. Yeah. Uh, Alex. Yeah. It says, uh, since the curse, you've edged away from alcohol and drugs and since uh, found fitness and training to be more uh, suitable to relieve stress. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I still like a good beer, too. Okay. Um, but, you know, yeah. And... I like beer and I like fitness. I'm actually working. I need some investors to maybe get my Kickstarter going on protein. Yeah. Protein Bro is a... <laughs> It's a light beer with 20 grams of protein. Just think about that. Think about that post workout. Oh fuck! Just even right now, you could have one. Beer. And you'd be like, get your buzz on, then get your pump your on. Protein requirements. Yeah, it sounds like you. And it would be get like pumping on to get and some And there's gonna be weights yeah, in the twice. bottom of it so that you get you know a nice rep yeah, every time sip. you go. Each in. can weighs five pounds, so you can just <laughs> rep the shit out. Yeah. yeah, and they're in the shape of kettlebells, and the, you just pull <laughs> off the top and pour it in your face. That's salty. Yeah. If you need it to be lighter, you just drink. Yeah. That's Always works. <laughs> <laughs> and if you and I'm out. Let's wipe our hands of that conversation. <laughs> uh, the theft. Uh, it says that the the songs are about the uh, theft of your freedom uh, while struggling with alcohol. No. Mm. No. All right. False. <laughs> song is kind of about it's kind of about Edward Scissorhands. What? What was it? The is bridges. It? Yeah, you wrote the bridge. I didn't yeah. Write the bridge. Damn. That song came <laughs> musically. Uh, from listening to Edward Scissorhands coming up with the idea of that song musically, like just Danny from Elfman listening, like the Danny Elfman soundtrack from Edward Scissorhands. Oh, yeah, yeah. It was more and about then, how society rapes and kills your dreams being in the music industry, but... And then, yeah. <laughs> I went more literal, yeah, yeah, yeah. I went more wow. literal and wrote the bridge about Edward Scissorhands. Like, is that what, Ed, that's what Edward Scissorhands is actually about. It is. Little it is. do people know. Yeah. Music industry. Like jarring, but don't yeah. do drums. Mine's <laughs> for that one is wrong. Hello. All right, yeah, more yeah, fiction. That's wrong. I love it when it's wrong. Mm -hmm. I really do. Yeah. It's more fun that way. Uh, Congregation of the Damned. It says it, it encompasses themes such as self-doubt and self-loathing. Uh, Alex, it says at that point you claimed that you're not singing about dark things to promote them, but you're singing about them so you don't go insane. <laughs> yeah, I mean, more or less. And that's why, sure. I mean, I think a lot of dudes make art and do stuff is yeah, to, absolutely. to get shit off their chest. Yeah. So yeah, I definitely, yeah. I mean, I don't know if I what level of insane I would go, but... Just a, a release of creative... Yeah, 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 it's very cathartic. That's sure. Sort of good, good word to drive into the ground. Is that still the case with this new record you're finding? Yeah, I think even more so. This is the first, this is the first time really in our band's history that I, I can listen to the songs and get emotional again. 
it's not like I don't get emotional listening to the ones in the, but I just never, they like, it wasn't as like raw and real to me. And there's like stuff on this record that's really like, I don't know, it's fucking hard to deal with stuff. And the <laughs> songs mean one thing and sound one thing to you guys and everybody else, but they always mean something different to me. So when I'm hearing it, I'm hearing sure. something else. And yeah, it's, it's, real, it's real good and painful for me. I kind of like pain though. I've started to like think about it, like all the stuff I like to do in a weird way. Like I don't mind getting tattoos. Like yeah. the worst, I, I'm realizing the worst the spot, the more I think it's funny to like get through it. Um, and then even in like the workouts and stupid stuff that I do, it's just like I'm I'm always in pain or giving pain to other people. So <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, especially with ding true and stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah so you no, know, usually at that point I'm just tapping. Uh, in this yeah. segment, right after he said all of that, you should just do close up of his face, like a <laughs> smile, like the nicest smile. <laughs> uh, Travis it says oh, since two thousand. It says since two thousand thirteen, you've been a member of Trapped. But Trap's page says that you only played with them in 2013. Uh, that is kind of true. I played with them for about a year and a half, and I was just their touring guitarist. Okay, so no longer with the band. Correct, yeah. What were the actual, what was the born and date and uh, done by date? <laughs> <laughs> born and date and done by date. Born and done by date, sir. Uh, yeah, I'm just kidding. Uh, like 2420 to. 13, 2014. So yeah, yeah, about a year and a half or so. Okay. During that hiatus. True-ish. Yeah, true-ish. It's true-ish. There you go. All right, last one. For true uh, Long Live, the new record coming soon. Uh, it says that you guys hoped to return to a sound more reminiscent of The Curse. I don't know that we ever said that, um, but I think that it's <laughs> pseudo-true. I think it's more reminiscent of, of albums, I would say... Well, you know what? It's no, not, I'll take this one. Not, yeah, I got yeah. this one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I see this more as a record that could have been an alternate instead of a death grip on yesterday. I think that okay. after we made the curse, that this record could have happened instead of death grip. Because you mean after you, death grip. You mean you know, instead, 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 instead of, of it? Instead of death grip. Ignoring, let's say, I think this record, if we had made this, would have changed like the course of our band. Like, Let's say that the, the major label years never happened. I think that this would have been a progression after the curse that makes sense because if you look at it, I don't do clean vocals on this record at all and I actually do a decent amount and start to do clean vocals on Death Grip. Death Grip whereas yeah. this record's totally devoid of it and it's all just aggressive and the curse is all just aggressive. So to me, this is just like a different path our band could have taken. I don't think yeah. it's a retrogression. I, we're not definitely trying to make, let's write a riff that sounds like we wrote it in 2005. But it's like, you know, this record could have could fit in there and then it would just be a different choose your own adventure, you know? I think it's definitely had the si similar headspace we were when we did Death Grip as far as okay. like how we approached making the music and kind of how we approached uh, like or the energy kind of behind making the music. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. All right. Thank you guys so much for dropping by today. Hey, thanks totally thank you. appreciate yeah, you guys talking. Yeah, thank, thank you. Snacks. Yeah. Oh, we, yeah, we gave them snacks. All the snacks. We're good hosts. Really great, uh, some sort of fruity beverage. <laughs> yeah, that's very fruity. Yeah. Uh, long live, new album. Be sure to pick that up and go buy The Curse again. Give yeah. these guys a gold plaque. <laughs> All we need is like, yeah, like, like 40,000. Just go and buy Some 40, billionaire 000. out there that wants 40,000 copies of The Curse. If you yeah. buy 10,000 copies of The Curse, you can come to one Atreyu show a year for free. Thank mm -hmm. you.